We go into the house and we're loud, making sure that people know that we're there. And there may or may not be, have been doing um, some adult activities. We're going to say the wild thing. Wrestling or, <laughs> you, you know. Hello, this is James Harper from the Real Estate Halftime Show. Thank you for joining us today here at our secret headquarters in Hendersonville, Tennessee. We have a special guest here, one of my good friends, and we're going to talk anything and everything crazy about the real estate market. And what I mean by crazy is we're going to laugh a little bit on some of the great experiences and not so great experiences that Tony Carlatello has encountered in his 24 years uh, here in the Nashville market. Stay tuned for Tony Carlatello on the Real Estate Halftime Show. Let's roll. It's time for the Real Estate Halftime Show. Sit back. Relax and listen to Nashville's premier inside scoop to real estate with the mortgage extraordinaire himself, James Harper. Welcome back. Thank you again for joining the Real Estate Halftime Show. I love doing episodes like we're about to do today. Tony Carlatello once again is with us here in the secret headquarters in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And we're going to talk a little fun stuff today. But first of all, Tony, Tell us a little bit about you and what makes you special in the real estate business. Thank you, James. I am um, very honored to be here with you. We've done yeah. this a, a couple times, so um, been in real We're estate. We're gonna get for, this one right. Yeah, though. that's right. Uh, <laughs> been in real estate for 24 years. Sold a couple thousand homes in my my career. Mm, nice. I'm, I'm not sure there's many people in town that have done that, but I'm very proud of that. I am. Um, I um, work with a lot of really cool people, and um, you know, one of the things that you know that I focus in on daily, and I talked about this earlier in my men's group I was in, mm-hmm. is I spend most of my day thinking about how can I bless other people. Yes, yes, and 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 it's funny how things how lucky I am, how I get opportunities by focusing in on assisting other people, whether it's giving a referral, uh, whether it is sending a birthday card, uh, checking in with them, and uh, just doing little things Making like that. Making them feel special. Yeah. And I think, you you know, I was actually getting ready to say that right before you mentioned it, and it actually put little goose chills on my back because I think that's one of the best features, not features, characteristics of you is that you do have that wow factor. And that wow factor is you pay attention to the details. And uh, no detail goes unnoticed. I know it's tough sometimes when you get a lot of clients and you're scrambling around, you're going all these different directions. But the little details matter. A handwritten postcard, um, a little phone call, a text, um, a little pop by, a little um, gift maybe. And so all those things matter. And I think that makes you extra special in the business. Uh, Not a lot of agents do that anymore or can do it or have the wherewithal to do it. And so that makes you stand out for sure. So hats off to you for, for how you handle your business there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Tony, let's dive right in. So we hear a lot of stories out here in the real estate world. A lot of them funny, a lot of them maybe sad, a lot of them just kind of ho hum. Right. But what we're going to talk about today are some of the funny experiences that maybe you've encountered. And it's not, yeah, we're going to have a little laugh and we're going to cackle back and forth. But it's also, we're going to get to some kind of end learning lesson sure. for those folks out there that are listening and may want to sell. So, Top three experiences. Let's start with number one that you've experienced right off the top of your head that just made you walk out and walk out of the house and say, oh, my God, what did I just see? What just happened? And I don't even know what to say. <laughs> so, so go ahead. So I'll, I'll go with the, uh, one real fast. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of times in, in our industry that – uh, we have a lot of people that are in real estate that list homes, but maybe they don't do it full time. And I'm not knocking on anybody that doesn't sure. do it full time. But say that they don't properly prepare their clients on what a showing looks like. And and so what you're it, you're a buyer's agent I'm, getting ready, you're getting ready to go into a home that another listing yeah, agent has. Exactly. So um so an example, uh, typically whenever you 
list your home with a professional person. They give you a list of homework things to do and be prepared for whenever your home goes on the market. So many times I have gone into homes and um, the people not know that we have an appointment. Pretty Mm. common. That happens, I would Mm. say, pretty regularly, you know, at least once a month. All right, so the key word there is they didn't know he was coming. Correct. And okay. even though there's an appointment desk or you call the agent and you get it set up and, you know, you have the showing instructions in. And, and so the house a lot of times is not prepared, whether it's cleaned, uh, whether there's kids in diapers running around, whether the <laughs> the uh, the dishes are washed, aren't washed or, or the clothes, you know, are being washed or the dishwasher's on and different things like that. Very, very, very common. So what's the craziest thing that you've walked in on? So this is you show up for an appointment. <laughs> is the is the borrower with you? So the borrower's with me. Okay, you know, borrower's with you. Yeah, ninety nine percent of the time. You show up. You think everything's good. You've gone through uh, the 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 listing appointment yep. uh, center or whoever's showing handling desk, yep. the showing desk. Yeah. Okay. You walk in, and what are some of the things you've seen? So this has happened, fortunately, unfortunately, a couple of times that. We go into the house and we're loud, making sure that people know that we're there. And you're walking around, then you might go to the uh, primary suite, (laughs) aka master bedroom. There may or may not have been doing um, some adult activities. We're going to say the wild thing. Wrestling or, (laughs) you you know, what my parents used to say. Wrestling. (laughs) Hey, who's wrestling in there? uh, So, um, believe it or not, that happens a lot. Really? uh, More times than you think. And and it does happen more whenever um, it's a property that maybe is an investment property. Okay. And there's not a lot of great communication between the owner and the landlord. And there's three different levels that it goes to. But... Um, that is not only embarrassing, you, you know, for um, for you, but also kind of devastating for them. <laughs> so, Talk about eyeballs popping yeah, out, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, many times people are taking showers, fortunately, you know, you can kind of hear that and, and you don't go in, but that happens a lot. But, you know, I think the most common thing is, um, is not having the house prepared and, um, you know, where it maybe um, smells like food or, or they've, you know, you have dogs running around. Um, you know, my, th- this is a funny story. The very first house I ever shown, and it's so embarrassing, the very first one in 2000. Um, long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. The, um, the owner did not put their dog away. The dog takes off. <laughs> And for takes forty off outside. takes off outside for so for forty five minutes. <laughs> me and my client are chasing a dog, <laughs> trying to get this darn dog, <laughs> and uh, had neighbors trying to help. I mean, it was it was pretty like, oh my gosh, what, what 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 have I got myself into? And, yeah, and you're uh, probably dressed up. You're yeah. probably running around in dress <laughs> right. shoes. You're sliding through the yard. Yes. Oh man. Yeah. Well, I had one agent tell me one of the craziest stories where she sold this client's house and they were moving to another house and they decided at the very end that they didn't want to move. They didn't want to go to this other house, this new house, but they had already sold the one they're living in. And so the guy is just planted right there in his chair and the moving trucks are circling the house saying, Hey, we're ready to move in. We're ready to move in the new clients or the new borrowers, you know, buying this house. And, uh, so the agent, the listing agent literally goes in and starts packing, packing for the client. (laughs) And and, uh, apparently they weren't even packed enough to even leave. And she spent the next three hours helping them pack and load the truck. Right. Now that is way above and beyond. You talk about losing money on your commission. Right. (laughs) If you're sitting there packing, doing physical labor, (laughs) trying to help your clients pack and get out. Yeah. I'll tell you another story. All right, number two. All right, we got number two coming at you. So it's not necessarily like a crazy – it is crazy, uh, but sad in the same sense. And and this happens quite frequently in Middle Tennessee. You have a house for sale. I'm the listing agent. I'm selling the house. The house is vacant. And um, um, a scammer will get on Craigslist, Marketplace, and market the property for rent. 
Mm. So this happened to me about three or four months ago. I had a client that that scammer researched them, knew all the whole story about the whole property. And the day that we were, uh, the day that we closed on it, um, there were two moving trucks moving in at the same time that the people that they got scammed, um, the buy or the renter got scammed on their deposit and first month's rent <laughs> and, and was planning on moving there. It was very hectic. And they're like, Oh no, we have a lease. Here's the lease. And I was like, that's not, oh that's my not, God. yeah. So that happens quite a bit in middle Tennessee. So if you see a deal out there, if you're renting and it's too good to be true, it likely is too good to be true. So mm, just know that. Good. Make sure that you get verification on that. But it was super sad for for the renter that um, that that happened um, because they lost like a, like forty five hundred bucks in that whole um, transition. So what do you think has been your absolute craziest, the absolute craziest thing that you just walked out and said, "Man, I cannot believe the, either the way the house looked, yeah. either something you saw, yeah." Um, or, you know, you just kind of mentioned where somebody yeah. just got scammed. I mean, you've for 24 years. Well, I know, well, let me just, for all the listeners out there, I know Tony's going to have a hard time remembering 24 years, <laughs> but maybe in the last, uh, and five, I don't look like I've been in real estate for 24 <laughs> years, <that's right. laughs> but maybe he might remember in the last maybe three to five. Yeah. So we'll give him that. I'll tell you about something that, um, that is a, another kind of like sad situation. Um, but been into many homes, many homes, um, that maybe there's a hoarder in it. Mm. And, um, you, you know, you, you get the gist of that from the pictures, but it's, it's amazing what some photography can do. And, you, you know, and the sadness that sometimes you like, you see from pet feces to, yeah. you, know, you know, like it's literally a trail to, to get to, to places. So, um, it, it's never a shock to me, um, but it, but it, it but it hurts my heart, you know, yeah. kind of like seeing that. What's been the scariest situation you've been in? Where oh, you said, gosh. where you just were really so feeling just, uncomfortable? I had, a, I had a, an incident just last or two weeks ago that happened to me. I was having an open house at a new construction I have, and I'm not the greatest um, um, area of town. And I pull around back, and somebody jumps out. Um, from behind the privacy fence, new construction. Nobody's supposed to be there. <laughs> First and of all, runs the over, hell out of yeah, you. runs over to me, <laughs> and and said, "Hey, man, I'm looking for a job. You got anything?" I'm like, "Whoa, what? What is? I mean, like, <laughs> you know, literally got got a, a, attacked." <laughs> and, and so you, you know, you, you you see that you know yeah. a lot, yeah. and and you, you you know that you know and to be prepared for you know agents that if you're out there always know your surroundings and um, and people selling your house you know per, whether it's new or or um, or existing know what's going on because your house is being broadcast to the world. And, and, and so, which can make you, you know, vulnerable yeah. to, for people, you know, imposing in on you. So, so I have one where, um, and I'm sure you've probably encountered this, where they said, hey, we're ready to sell. It all looks good. Butterflies, yeah. you know, and flowers and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be a great listing. Right. And you get all the way to the closing table and you find out that the seller in this particular case on one of mine, um, had like a $2.3 million lien, oh. you know, doesn't even have a chance to even yes. sell the house yes. because they're such, they're so leveraged on the lien sure. thinking, and you got to think, man, I, I would think that the, the seller would know that they can't sell this house. I mean, yeah. they got a $2.3 million lien. That's not a, that's not Something a 50,000 or 20 or 10,000. Yeah. That's, that's pretty substantial. Yeah. Um, any I, anything that has happened like that, where maybe the 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 listing or the the seller just wasn't very honest with sure. you, and then you spent a lot of time and energy. So that, that happens. That used to happen a lot more than it does now. Um, why? Why? Why now? Different. Well, because our technology is better. Okay. So, like, so um, you can like fifteen, twenty years ago, it, you would you would maybe have a tax lien or a judgment that has to be paid through the sale or right. back taxes that you can't necessarily catch on the front end. You only catch it on the the back end. Title, yeah. So, yeah. So now, you know, like one of the first things that we do is give the contract Who's to the, we? Compass. Um, my my team. 
your team. My, yeah, my, team has the ability it, yeah, to research that. Yeah, better. Bobby Sue will will send it to Bobby Sue. Bobby Sue, our famous Bobby Sue. Uh, we love Bobby, Bobby Sue. Sue. There we go, Bobby Sue. Um, um, that she will send it to our title company, and they will go ahead and do a title search to kind of catch 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 those things now. So okay, great. Um, which, but it is there, that that happens a lot. You know, the, or and they forget. Oh, I didn't know I had to pay back. That Is there a red mortgage. flag that kind of goes <laughs> up when somebody's so desperate to sell that you think there might be something? You need, uh, uh, like, uh, like, hey, I need to ask some more questions. This is like happening so fast and too good to be true, and they're so aggressive on wanting to sell. Does that kind of red so flag you in any way? I 100% had that situation happen yesterday to me. And the person got mad at me because I was asking questions about that. Mm. And they go, oh, you just don't want to sell my house. And I was like, no, that is not the case at all. I have to know all this information so that I can sell your house. And, and not knowing, knowing on the back mm. end does not help our situation. Knowing on the front end um, and advising you <laughs> is the most important thing that we can do. And, and so it, it, it turned out that it did not turn out good uh, for me or him because I was like, you know, I need to know what you do own, own your yeah, IRS. You got to you you know, be transparent with yeah, me. We got to know what you own your first and own what your second is. And, and, and if you don't know those things, you can't. It's hard to be. Well, I think the gist of all this, just like lenders, not all lenders are created equal. Not all real estate yeah. agents are created equal. And if for all the listeners out there, I'd say do your due diligence on whoever you choose to list your home or to represent you as a buyer's agent. Um, there's reasons why you ask a lot of questions. And it's kind of like, uh, and it's all about presentation. So if you want to maximize the ability to sell your home, uh, you want to maximize the, in order to do that, you have to maximize the way it looks. The way it presents itself, it's kind of like a, going to a fine dining restaurant. Right. might be the best tasting food in the world, but if it's presented in a way that just really doesn't look appealing, right. our senses are going to tell us it probably doesn't taste very good. Sure. So I don't really maybe want to buy it. Right. So, well, that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, so any any extra thoughts on that so, uh, that uh, is about presentation and that's the whole reason why you're asking a lot of questions yes it's not because you want to be nibby uh it's not because you really care all about their business but you have to know enough information right. to be able to guide them in the right way yeah one, one of the things you asked me at the very beginning was what makes you different it, it, it it's not you know, there's a lot of realtors in town, a lot of really great realtors, yeah. a lot of realtors that are really good people, you, you know, but what I like to think that I do is like, I always put your interests first, you, mm. you know, in every situation. And, and if you hire me, sometimes I'm going to tell you things that you don't necessarily like to hear or what you want to hear or what you, what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Mm. And, 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 and whenever you can have that trust and bond with someone to have a hard conversation with them, um, then they understand that like, Hey, he really does get what I'm trying to do. And, and that's, that's what we try to do. But, you know, on the lighter side that the things like whenever you, you are dating someone and you're married and if you, if you have someone that is dressed like a slob and not put together, great. Do you really necessarily want to let that be, be the person you're going to be with, you know, right. And it's the same with your house. Have your house ready. You know, paint your front door, clean your landscaping out. So do you have your own checklist? I have a I have a big checklist. Is it a short that, list or a long list? Well, it, it just depends on the house. <laughs> it so depends on I, the house. Yeah, I, I, I've been into many homes. I was like, man, this this is this going to take a minute. Yeah, and, and there's yeah. many and there's many homes that are like, okay, you know, we got we got a minute that we're going to have to get this together. <laughs> which is one of the things that you know that. I'm able to offer my clients is we have a couple different services that, you, you know, where we can mm. give money to fix their house up and they pay us back, you know, at closing, we have, I have another, mm, I know I, that. yeah, I have another vendor that will do all the repairs and you don't have to pay anything until the home is done and they take care of everything, whether it's putting in new carpet, putting in new cabinets oh. and, and some different things like that. And, and I highly recommend those things. And, and so we want to, we, we have one shot to make a big difference. That's that we need to really highlight that in this segment. I didn't realize there are services out there to help sure. you with your 
repairs, yep. repairs slash we're going to call it buff and fluff items yep. to make your house look uh, presentable. Right. Um, that might be a segment all in itself. You never right. know. All right. The next one is, I think my house is worth five hundred thousand oh, dollars. Yeah. And you look it up, and it's really worth about four hundred. Right. But I'm awful proud of five hundred, and I'm sticking on five hundred. Yes. How do you diffuse that situation, and what are some of the workarounds, dance arounds, uh, to help overcome? You know, someone that's really just proud of their house. Right. And I call you know the Taj Mahal on a beer budget kind of uh, yeah. mentality. Um, so, what do you think about that? That that is the um, particularly the market that we just came out of. Um, everyone assumes that we're still in that market. Yes, of, yes. Yeah, 2020, yes. 2021, you know, 2022, uh, 2023, we got our butt kicked. Mm, and, kidding. And, <laughs> um, and, um, and we don't have the, we have the strong reality is like home stand on the market, you know, literally four times longer than it did two years ago. And is that what it is? It, it, it might even be six times longer. Really? And, and so, you know, you have to have that honest conversation up front. And our job is to, as a, a realtor professional, is to share the data that we have, make a suggestion, because here's the difference between us and Zillow. Zillow is a, a, a fantastic tool to get a quick guesstimate on your house. Mm -hmm. They are wrong 73% of the time of what the, <laughs> the, the value is, but they give you a good idea and they make it easy to search properties and do things like that. But they can't tell if you have an updated kitchen or a pool or you back up to a road, road track or the interstate or you're on a busy road or if you're on a cul-de-sac or, you know, they don't have that ability to to add those things in there, whereas your local professional will come in, analyze it, and give you a true value. So all we do is, like, we tell you what we think it's worth, and then you make that decision. Now, a good realtor will say, okay, if you do this, this, and this, we think your house is going to sell for this. We are probably going to break even on what you put into it, but we're going to sell it faster, and it's going to be more appealing to more people. And, and that's the advice that a good realtor professional will do. And I think the realtors that don't do that, you know, have a tough time. I mean, they might get that listing under wraps pretty quick. You know, it's no different than in the in the lending business. I mean, uh, people that call up and say, "Hey, what's your rate today?" I don't know. Right. Well, you want it to be right. I can I can have it. I right. can have it be whatever you want it to be. Right. But what else are you wanting right. to try to achieve? Exactly. And when you start diving into that, and no different than what you're talking about here, uh, there are a lot of people out there that are quick to be able to give the answer that the person wants to right. hear, but. But are they going to succeed at the very end? Right. And uh, but that's great. That's can, great. Can I speak to that? Yes, please? go ahead. So I, 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 this is one of my um, bigger pet peeves in my industry. Mm, we're, we're on pet peeve number pet one. Peeve pet peeve is, number one is, from Tony. Um, part-time agents yes. that are trying to do it. I'm all for a part-time person trying to get in this business. What I'm not okay is, personally, is... You know, I just I just looked at a property yesterday that had three pictures of the home whenever we had the snow three weeks ago. <laughs> now, in the last three weeks, we've had a couple of pretty days. And yes. It's been easier to go and take a couple outside pictures and inside pictures of to market the property. That gets on my nerves. Yeah. It, you know, my, my profession, not, I mean, literally 25 to 30% of all the homes that are on the MLS right now are taken by a camera phone. It's like, come on, we get paid a lot of money to market this properties. And, and so that's a big pet peeve of mine. You know, I've even, you know, come to the conclusion that I'm going to have to do their work most of the time mm. to have a smooth transit uh, transaction for everyone. Yeah. And, and so, but, you know, if you are thinking about listing with someone, you know, do your due diligence get their marketing plan, see how many homes they've sold, see if they're trying to even be full-time. If they're just doing it just to make it an extra income, it's probably not a great choice for you. If they're cutting their commission, you know, automatically, just think if they're doing that for their money, what are they going to do for your money? Yeah. And I also say you can't, you can't do real estate part-time. Yeah. So you just far. can't, I mean, can't do lending, can't do real estate, um, anything part-time it will eventually catch up sure. to you knowledge is power 
Uh, people are going to read through whether you're really in the game right. and and uh, have the ability to solve problems right. and get to the finish line. And it, it all comes through. Um, but unfortunately, there's still a lot of people out there trying to do it part time and it just doesn't work. It's not sustainable. Well, man, I want to leave one last thing here. How do people reach out to you, Tony, so that they can get more advice and wisdom and maybe even some funny stories? Yeah. Um, how do they reach out to you? So a couple of different ways. You know, obviously the easiest is calling me. Um, 615-405-7422. My email is tonyshomes at gmail.com. You know, you can follow me on TikTok. Yes, um, he's I, a TikToker. <laughs> I, um, I, I put some funny videos out on there. And, and I What's TikTok? To, um, it's at Tony Carlatello. And, um, oh, yeah. at Tony Carlatello on yeah. TikTok. Go check it out. He's got over 11,000 followers. He's totally kicking my butt. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm going to have to do something to try to surpass him, but he's doing a great job. So he's got a lot of content on TikTok that really dives into a little bit of everything all the way, you know, down to lending. Yeah. He talks about some of the, the guidelines, uh, uh, on lending, uh, but really kind of, uh, has some funny stuff, some serious stuff. So definitely follow him on TikTok. There's a lot of content there. Any other? Yeah, and and if you're interested in, um, I put out a video every week called Talking Tuesday, and um, and it's like this coming Tuesday we're talking about the NES incentives that they have on getting essential heat and air if you're 65 and older where you don't have to pay it back. And you know it's income based. Um, there's also some other government um, programs that you can. Um, that, that you can do to fix your house up that we're going to talk a little bit about. But if anyone's interested in my um, my monthly newsletter and my Talking Tuesday videos, just shoot me an email, and I'm happy to share that with you. But that's be awesome. been re- that's been pretty successful. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure. We know we'll have you back. Yep. And uh, that's all I have for today. We're out of here, Tony. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Right, See you.